A disaccharide is a molecule that is made up of two monosaccharides. In this worksheet, we're going to be looking at three different types of disaccharide, disaccharides, starting with maltose, which is also known as malt sugar. Maltose is made by combining two glucose molecules. Here's glucose molecule number one. Here's glucose molecule number two. And then over here, this is almost alpha maltose. We're going to complete the structure and make it alpha maltose. All that this is missing is the bond that connects these two monosaccharides together. The bond that is used to connect two monosaccharides is referred to as a glycosidic bond. A glycosidic bond is a single bonded oxygen that is connecting two monosaccharides. So I'm just using the abbreviation MS for monosaccharide, and there's just a single bonded oxygen between those two monosaccharides. And there are there are a few different ver uh, variations on this particular oxygen atom in terms of the angle, like that oxygen atom could be pointing up between those two monosaccharides, or it could be pointing down between the two monosaccharides, or sometimes we see it kind of at a total angle like this. The orientation of this oxygen atom is represented by the Greek letter, in this case, alpha. Um, and then also the other variety or other option that we have um, for the glycosidic bond is where exactly it connects the two rings together. Uh, and that's represented by these numbers, one and four. So let's take a look at what this represents. The numbers, as I said, the numbers one and four represent the two carbon atoms that are being connected by the glycosidic bond. And the numbering is, is referencing the original numbering of these rings that we've been using all along. Starting with the very right-hand point of the molecule, this would be carbon number one, and then numbering around the ring clockwise. This is the numbering system that we use for a monosaccharide. So a glycosidic bond that is called 1,4, like we have in this case, this means that carbon number one is being connected to carbon number four. Carbon number one of one of the monosaccharides is connecting to carbon number four of the other monosaccharide. So over here, I'm just gonna use, just draw those numbers. I'm not gonna draw all 12 of the numbers into the mix. Um, the alpha notation is used in the same way that we've been using it in the past. So when we're looking at the two carbon atoms, one and four, if either one of those carbon atoms is anomeric, anomeric meaning that it's on the very right-hand point of the molecule, so this is the anomeric carbon and this is the anomeric carbon, if either one, uh, this one or this one, if either one of them is anomeric, which this one is, then we'll apply the alpha notation the same way that we have always been doing. Alpha is what we use to represent a bond that is going in the down position like that. Um, and then obviously it needs to come back up in order to connect to carbon number four. So this is what I've drawn here, a 1,4 alpha glycosidic bond. The one and the four are representing the carbon atoms of the of the two monosaccharides, carbon number one is connected to dot 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 carbon number four. That's what that means. And the alpha means that carbon number one, actually since carbon number one is anomeric, its bond to the oxygen Will point down just like uh, if it was uh, alpha monosaccharide that would mean that its bond to oxygen would be pointing down now last but not least so this molecule right here is maltose and specifically this molecule is alpha maltose and we can say that because if we look at the anomeric carbon again the anomeric carbon is always the carbon that is on the very right hand point of the molecule so for this whole entire molecule this is its right hand point and its OH group is pointing down so this is alpha malt alpha maltose if it was pointing up instead of down then it would be beta maltose Oh, that's the next question. How would the structure of beta maltose be different from alpha? Um, the anomeric, the OH on the anomeric carbon would point up. 
Let's take a look at our second example. Um, for the second example, we're gonna be looking at lactose, which is the sugar that is in milk. Lactose is made from galactose, which is right here, and glucose, which is right here. And so here is going to be the structure of alpha lactose. We're just gonna complete it. Um, we're gonna draw it. To connect these two monosaccharides, we're gonna draw a 1,4 beta glycosidic bond. So the 1,4, as we know, that means that carbon number one is being bonded to carbon number four. And if we use the numbering system on the rings, starting with the very right-hand point and going clockwise around the ring, here is our carbon number one and here is our carbon number four. This is a beta glycosidic bond, which means first we have to we have to find our anomerics. Here's our anomeric carbon. Here's our other anomeric carbon. If we're looking at the two carbons that are involved in the bond, the carbon number one is the anomeric carbon. So that means that since it's a beta bond from our anomeric carbon, the oxygen needs to be pointing up and then connect to carbon number four. The beta means that the oxygen points up from carbon number one. And this is alpha lactose because the very right hand point of the lactose molecule, this is the anomeric carbon, the oxygen on its anomeric carbon is pointing down. Beta lactose would have the OH pointing up. Identify the acetal, the hemiacetal, and the anomeric carbons. Oh, I've already identified the anomeric carbon. There's only one, it's this one right here. This one doesn't count anymore. It's just the one that is literally on the very right hand point. The acetal carbon. So remember that the acetal functional group is an oxygen that is single bonded to two carbon atoms. And the um, carbon atoms have an additional oxygen on them, and they have additional carbons on them. I think I wrote that wrong. Carbon atom single bonded to two oxygen atoms, which is single bonded to two carbon atoms. There we go. I had it the other way around. Hemiacetal is a carbon atom that's single bonded to two oxygens, and one of those oxygens has a hydrogen, but the other one does not. So let's go find those groups. We're looking for two oxygens separated by a carbon, just one carbon. And this is kind of tricky because there's a lot of oxygens in this molecule. So we're looking for an oxygen atom that is um, separated from another oxygen atom by only one carbon. So there, I've found one right there. And then next thing we have to do is look at these oxygen atoms and ask ourselves if either one of these oxygen atoms have a, a hydrogen on them. These ones do not, so this right here is going to be an acetal. The hemiacetal is located right here, and see there we have an OH, so here's our hemiacetal. For our last example, we are looking at sucrose cane sugar or beet sugar. Sucrose is made from D-glucose, which is right here, and D-fructose, which is right here. And we're gonna connect these um, two molecules together with a 1-2 alpha-beta glycosidic bond. So crazy right there, 1-2 means that we're making that bond between carbon number one and carbon number two. So let's find carbon number one and carbon number two. With the six-membered ring, we're going to start numbering on the very right-hand point, one, two, three, four, five, six. With the five-membered ring, remember that carbon number one sits outside the ring, and then we go to two, three, four, five, and then carbon number six sits outside. So our bond is being formed between these two carbon atoms right here, this guy, and this guy. So it's going to be between this one and this one. And it says that this is an alpha beta bond. How do we end up with two numbers? Well, here is our anomeric carbon and here is our anomeric carbon. 
And this particular bond, the 1-2 bond, is being formed between two anomeric carbons, which means that we're going to use both the alpha and the beta notation, or at least we're going to use two different representations. Um, we, we need to refer to the position from every single anomeric carbon. So for carbon number one, this is an alpha bond because the oxygen is pointing down from carbon number one. But for carbon number two, it's beta because it's pointing up from carbon number two. So the name has both alpha and beta because both carbon number one and carbon number two are anomeric. And the bond is alpha with respect to carbon number one, and it's beta with respect to carbon number two. Now for the last question, it says this is just sucrose. It's not alpha sucrose, it's not beta sucrose. Why would that be? Sucrose doesn't have an anomeric carbon. So if you look at the very right-hand point for these molecules, um, neither one of these has an OH on it. So when we're classifying it as alpha or beta, we look at the direction of the OH group on the carbon on the very right hand point and there isn't one on this one so no anomeric carbon or an easier way to think about this would be to think of that there is no OH on the right hand points of the molecule.